Hey guys, in this video, I want to tell you about my own Zoom webinar experience. This time, not as an operator, but I'm actually the presenter. Now, as a presenter, my experience on the other side of Zoom webinar was quite different. Here's how I want to make the most of your time here. I want to show you all the files I ended up getting by signing up for the webinar, pretending I'm an attendee so I can show you guys what it looks like. And I will walk you through my experience. And I think New York Public Library, I think they did such a great job. Thank you, Maddie Cohen. As a facilitator, what I think went really well and why, and the fact that she enabled live transcription, which means as an attendee, you will have the option to turn transcription or live captions on and off during the session. I will also talk about chats, show you the chats that was going on, and also how I answered, I think, over 50 live questions. My experience using the Q&A feature. If you're watching this prior to June 10th, well, um, good news is I will be presenting again as part of NYPL, New York Public Library, on the topic of how to grow your YouTube channel. Hey, this video is brought to you by the YouTuber Kit, created by Face World Media. And it's not a course, but dozens of the most important systems, plans, templates, and guides career YouTubers need to start and grow a profitable YouTube channel. The $100 discount is here for a limited time only, so get your copy fast. Now back to today's video. Last week on Thursday, June 3rd, I was invited to present how to start your own podcast in 2021. The conversation was overwhelmingly positive. I seriously could not believe how enthusiastic everybody was. First, let's take a look at all the files that I received. Hey guys, so shortly after the webinar, I received an email. If you sign up as an attendee in this case, they use Eventbrite and here is a link that directs you right to the Zoom recording. Here we are. Okay, check it out. So here is the recording that I got. And um, as you can see, uh, what I like about this is you can see this full screen focus on what I was presenting. And on the right hand side, you have me as a video and it's pretty big. And also here you can see the auto transcription. I'm, I'm really surprised by how good the subtitle is. It's pretty accurate. And let's take a look. From here, the playback from Zoom allows you to watch it with or without the subtitles. You also have closed captions here and you also have audio transcript. Next, I want to show you the files I was getting, which I'm really happy about. I have received as a result of downloading all nine files, five MP4s, one VTT, by the way, this is the transcription file, uh, one N4A. So this is audio. I have two VTT and I have also the text file. This is the chat, as you can see. And uh, here's the transcript. So in order to open the transcript, you can use apps such as text edit. I just want to show you this real quick and what it looks like. Timestamps and all that. So this is something like an SRT, in my opinion, that you can even plug right into the video, kind of burn into the video if you choose to. Let's take a look at this VTT here. It's actually quite similar compared to the one we're just looking at earlier. So one is a transcript, one is closed captions, really similar. Okay, let's take a look at the videos, shall we? The first video. So as you can see, the first video have me in the corner, pretty small thumbnail, and then I have the slides I was presenting. So that's option one. Let's take a look at option two. This one clearly is just the slides, okay? Now the third video. So this is me in a really big video, so that's cool. That's something I can repurpose separately, for example, in cases where I don't want to include slides. And let's take a look at the file. These are really big files. So the first one, remember, is a combination of the slides on my video, 1.2 gigabyte. Second, it's just the slides, 355 megabytes. The third one is just me, which is 3.74 gigabytes. So these are really large files. Um, by the way, in case you were wondering, I was using a HD 1080p camera, so I was not using a 4K camera of any sort. Let's see, one more MP4, what is that? All right, that's Maddie right there. So finally, uh, there are many MP4s. You may be wondering, oh, this is so overwhelming, but hey, if you're planning on repurposing your content, 
uh, I would say this is the best feature, my favorite feature from Zoom webinar is that they send you the highest quality videos for everything, for every orientation. However, you can actually change this if you want in your account management setting. You don't have to uh, or need Zoom webinar to generate it as much. But if you're like me, a content creator, this is highly, highly recommended. So the difference in the last few um, videos are the split screen. So uh, one option will be just me, just a speaker, but the other would be me and the facilitator, Maddie. That's really the difference. I know it's kind of insignificant, but if you have the case of having other presenters and panelists joining you, you know, 10, 15 people that could be really useful. In that case, you might end up having many, many more videos. I also like the option of uh, the audio file. Let's have a listen. So the audio is fairly high quality. I mean, at nearly a hundred megabytes, that's not bad at all. Let's talk about the rest of the learning. I really like the fact that uh, Maddie and her team enabled live transcription. I think it's proven to be very helpful. This is not their first rodeo. In fact, New York Public Library has been running these wonderful events for free for so many people. I've seen a, a really huge diversity among the audience. The presentation itself was very seamless. I will actually include the presentation I used so you guys can access in the description below. I love the fact that Zoom allows you to record the actual webinar, which means you see the presentation, but you also see me as a speaker in a little corner, not very distracting, but also not too small. The playback or the, the replay option within Zoom webinar to me is really worth it. You have the presentation, you have the speaker, and then you have the chats, and also you have the closed caption already kind of burnt in or embedded as part of the replay. And the fact that there is a separate video I was able to download of just me. So I think about it from a video editing perspective. For instance, if you guys are content creators and you're trying to repurpose your Zoom webinars to be on YouTube, well, here's the thing. If you have the speaker in a tiny little corner, instead you have your slides on a big screen, it's actually very distracting. People like to watch other people. Therefore, in this case, if you can see the speaker more clearly, the more power to you. And I guarantee your engagement as a playback on YouTube will definitely go up. So having that bigger and clearer video is a huge deal and a huge benefit, which is something unfortunately you cannot get from GoToMeeting. Lastly, I want to talk about the Q&A, which means the questions that I had to answer live. I was really excited. What I love about the Q&A feature within Zoom is that you have the option to answer live where you can type out an answer. Look, if you're a presenter um, by yourself, chances are you're not going to use the type feature because you're speaking and maybe your answers are rather long. I love the fact that whenever I see a question in the little box, I'm able to basically click answer live. Once I do that, I answer the question live. And when I'm done, I click on done. The question doesn't disappear, but it moves into a little tab that says answered. And I can go back to the next open question. So I was able to switch back and forth. What I couldn't do as a presenter in order to seal the questions, um, at least that's my personal preference, is I did not want to go full screen with anything I was sharing. In this case, the slides I was using to kind of guide my conversation. So whether you use Google Slides or PowerPoint or a keynote, doesn't matter. I didn't actually like the fact that it would just take over my screen. Um, instead, I would like to see some of the chats going on. And especially I like to see the Q&A dialogue box pinned. So it means that what you might want to do is maybe move your presentation to a separate and clean tab. So you don't have all your Gmail and things like that open. Anything specific to your Zoom webinar, you can just keep all of that in a separate browser window. So when you share, you share that browser window as opposed to all your personal items. So that's it, guys. I hope you find this helpful. Please let me know what else you would like to learn about Zoom. I'm definitely not giving up on Zoom on this channel, but as a heads up, I'm definitely also pivoting and stepping into the world of digital marketing, how to build your creative business. To me as a content creator, the answer is yes, you can make a part-time, you can make a full-time living, but you have to treat what you do as a business. So I have so much to present to this crowd, how to change your mindset, how to build your ecosystem. I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Bye.